So we are back with another um, Bible study on Solomon. And um, the reason why I, I'm doing it on Solomon again is because I watched my old video and I, I, I was inspired by it, but I saw some things that I missed out on um, bringing up to you guys. So I want to talk to you about Solomon again. I am just like amazed with um, Solomon and um, the prayer at the dedication of the temple and the benediction at the dedication of the temple. It is just an amazing prayer uh, by Solomon. And the thing that I love the most is just his um, insight, his foresight, his um, his humbleness, the fact that he um, was just pouring out his heart to God. He worshiped God before um, he built the temple. He worshiped God at the dedication of the temple. He worshiped God and sacrificed to God after the dedication of the temple. And um, Solomon is just amazingly deep. In everything, we know he was uh, and is the most wisest person in the world. But it's just it's just amazing to see how um, the prayer that he prayed um, was just so intense. It was so deep, and I want to share with you a little bit more about Solomon. I want to talk about how he uh, became king of Israel what happened during his kingship in Israel and what happened after his kingship ended, after he died, um, what happened to Israel. So stick with me. Let's talk about Solomon and let's talk about how Solomon prayed. One of the best prayers I've ever read. So let's recap. So this is all going on around 970 BC. And, um, the beginning of the story of Solomon shows that Solomon is a wise man, even before God um, bless, uh, God approaches him with the basically a proposition that to come before me and ask me what you want. He was already a wise man. He was showing his wisdom, even in answering the question that God asked him, right? So he was already operating in wisdom, but Solomon was wise. Solomon was following the instruction that David, his father had given him. So even though he was young, some uh, scholars say he was around 16 when he took over the, uh, the kingship of Israel. But even though he was young, he was following the instructions of his father and he was already making wise de decisions. Um, immediately upon taking over as king, he began to take uh, care of business. He started making moves like a king would. He started handling business with his brother and with other people who he felt were not honest or were not uh, trustworthy or did not um, stay loyal to, to David and to the kingdom. Um, then he, he made some business moves. He married uh, the Pharaoh of Egypt's daughter that was a business move. He was positioning uh, Israel so that it would be a great nation um, and that they would have um, alliances and trade and all that kind of stuff. So Solomon was already operating in wisdom. He was already making moves like a king, even in his young age. So um, it continues on in uh, uh, chapter three. The, um, the actual words in chapter three, verse three says, Solomon loved the Lord and walked in the statutes of David, his father. So um, he started off, right, he started off operating in wisdom. He started off following the instructions of his father. He started off loving God, um, which is all the best components you can have to be a leader, a leader of God's chosen people at that. So let's continue. Um, verse 5. We see that the the word the Lord in all caps, which indicates that the Bible is talking about Yahweh, the most high God, um, appears. He appears to Solomon and he asks Solomon, what shall, what shall I give you? And he tells Solomon to name it. 
And it is at that point that Solomon in verse 9 asks for wisdom. Um, verse 10, God responds back to Solomon um, that because he asks for wisdom and not um, worldly things, that he would give him what he asks for, plus he would give him riches, plus he would give him honor. And so we see that God is honoring his request um, because it was it was not out of greed. It was not out of lust. It was out of um, wanting to be able to, uh, shall we say, just lead God's people correctly, right? Um, and verse 14, we see the first time that God gives uh, Solomon a warning that says, um, listen, you have to walk in my ways. You have to walk in my statutes. You have to follow my commandments. And I've blessed you. I'm going to give you wisdom. I'm going to give you the thing that you asked for, but I need you to listen to me. I need you to follow after me. Don't go following false gods. Don't follow the ways of like the Canaanites and all the other people in the area. Follow my commandments. Follow my statutes. Um, walk in my ways and I will bless you. Um, and then verse 15 and verse 6, 16, we see that Solomon worships God. Um, and, um, he has a first, his first major test after that point. Solomon has his first major test where the two women, um, we all know the story. The two women came up to Solomon and, um, and they approached him for judgment over what to do in the situation where one woman's baby had died and the other woman had snuck in over to her in the middle of the night, swapped out the babies and the real mom was rewarded with the baby after Solomon made a wise and righteous and just decision. So let's continue on. Stick with me. I'm going to take my glasses off for a minute. Uh, in um, verse 20, we see that see uh, the writer is letting us know that God has fulfilled his promise to Abraham. Um, the promise that he made to Abraham saying that he would bless his seed and that they would be as numerous as the stars in the sky and the sand of the sea. So it's showing um, even in Solomon's reign and rule as king of Israel that God has kept his promise to Abraham and to Abraham's seed. Um, God also uh, is showing that God also has given Solomon great wisdom, understanding, and great wealth such that kings have come from all over um, the na all over the world to hear the wisdom of Solomon. Chapter 5, Solomon prepares to build a temple, and it talks in detail about how he gets the, the building material and the wood and all that stuff um, <clears throat> to build the temple. Chapter 6, Solomon actually is building the temple in chapter 6, and it goes into detail about how he constructs, constructs the temple, the measurements, and how he overlays different areas with gold and all that. So if you have time, try to sit down and read it because it is very interesting how um, he goes about and how, how he values building the temple to God so much that he puts so much detail into all the work. Chapter uh, 8 is where um, I picked up on in my previous video about the prayer of the uh, dedication of the temple to God. Um, so you can watch that previous video, but I will also recap it at the end of this video. Just some, some key points. Um, but God, uh, I mean, Solomon returns the Ark of the Covenant to the temple. And then he, uh, down in verse 22, he lifts up his hands before the people and before God and he blesses the temple and he prays some really um, uh, intense prayers um, to God on behalf of the people uh, in those uh, sub subsequent verses. Um, chapter 9, we're almost done, see? Chapter 9 uh, is, um, if, we, if we look at verse 3, it's showing where God is appearing to Solomon and he is acknowledging uh, Solomon's dedication of the temple. He is acknowledging the prayers and the worship of Solomon and the people. And he is um, reminding Solomon also that, yes, I, I am pleased with this. Yes, I acknowledge this, but 
I need you to remember that I gave you some specific um, things that I need you to keep in mind. So God reminds Solomon that he has to um, put God first. He has to worship him and him only. And that um, he shouldn't, he, he, neither he nor the children of Israel should ever worship false gods, ever worship idols. And, and he gives them the penalty and the punishment that will happen if they do. Um, unfortunately, the book of Kings um, concludes with Solomon's life. And we know that he got distracted. He got de dis uh, deterred by his own lust and by the wives that he married. Um, he went into idolatry. He went into worship of false gods. And he uh, ultimately, you know forsook God. And because of that, um, God did exactly what he said he would do. He cut off the nation of Israel. He sent them into captivity. And, um, you know, it's really sad because in the warning that God gave to Solomon, he, he actually said that, you know, people would come by, he would rule, he, the, the, the temple would be destroyed. The nation would be, um, split into two, a Northern and Southern kingdom. We would later see, but that people would, would, walk by and wonder and, and speculate and say, what happened? You know, wasn't this the great, um, uh, the great people of God? Wasn't this a great nation? You know, now it's in ruins. So, and, you know, we, that was never God's, uh, best, um, plan for the nation of Israel. Um, and so, it, you know, it's, it's really sad to see that it ruined, uh, it was in, it became ruined and, um, and Solomon, you know, disobeyed God and forsook, you know, his lineage and everything that he, um, had promised God that he would be and do. So, um, and, but that is a lesson for us all. Um, and, you know, the word of God is here to correct us and to teach us. And so let's um, finish up real quick. Let's get back to those key points of why I made this video, because I wanted you to dig a little bit deeper into the prayer that Solomon prayed. But I also want you to know the uh, short, you know, just brief uh, synopsis of the life and history of Solomon. So um, hang in there. We're almost done. Let's get to those six key okay, points so and finish this up. We are just about finished. We are just recapping the video that I previously made called Pray Like Solomon Prays. And we're learning the key points to the prayer that Solomon prayed, why it is important to us in our life and how we can use it to build a more fulfilled and rich prayer life. Um, we are at 1 Kings chapter 8, around verse 22 at the dedication of the temple. And we're going to break down six key points so that you can add to your prayer life uh, when you're seeking God for any and everything. Number one, Solomon acknowledges God did this through him and that God kept his promise. So we recall that God uh, promised to David that he would allow his son to build the temple. And so Solomon is acknowledging God. He's thanking God, acknowledging God that while Solomon was the physical person bringing this all together, that it was God working through him to get it accomplished in the earth and that um, God kept his promise. So he's praising and thanking God for the things that God did. And that is something that we can do in our lives too. We can look back over our lives and see the ways that God brought us through, the ways that God worked things out and acknowledge that it was God who did it through us or for us. And we can praise him for those things. Number two, he prayed that God will keep his eye on them hear their cries and prayers, and dwell with his people. That is uh, something that we definitely can see in our in our lives, how we can include that in our prayers, um, how uh, we always want to be um, coming to God, for God to see us, God to hear us, and God to dwell in us and with us. Um, God promises us that he will hear the cries of his people and that um, we know that it is important that we are continuously filled with his spirit, that God will dwell in us, that God will um, be with us in every situation so that we can complete the um, the work that he has for us, do it in his strength and not in our own. 
Number three, he prays uh, a prayer of repentance and forgiveness. So we should always be in a hot heart posture that we are repenting before God, that we are turning from our ways. We are asking God to reveal to us the things that we may have done so that we can repent and that we seek forgiveness because um, we have to stay in a heart posture of, of um, forgiveness, forgiveness uh, for others and asking God to forgive us when we fail or fall. Number four, he prays a prayer of provision. Um, he asks God to teach them the right way to live in verses 35 and 30, 35 through 37. So he's asking God to be our, be our provider. God, you know, do the things for us that we cannot do for ourselves, but also to teach us. So we know that, you know, I know sometimes we think we have it all figured out, but we don't. And there are things that we should be seeking from God to teach us or to bring people into our lives to teach us so that we can grow closer to him, so that we can avoid the pitfalls and mistakes um, that will set us off track, that will take us off track. So prayer for provision as well as for God to lead and teach us. Number, number five, he prays that God will protect them from their enemies. Um, the actual words he says is uphold their cause. So that means that um, go ahead of them and fight for them. God, when they go out to fight against the enemies, um, enemy nations, that God will um, protect them. God will defend them. That God will fight for them. Um, that this includes that a part of that is that God's name will be made great among the nations. That God will protect them. That God will fight for them because it's his name that is at stake. His name will be glorified when he when they have victory over their enemies. And number six, this is our final one, plus a bonus. I actually have a bonus. Number six uh, will be for uh, redemption. So I want to pray, praise for redemption. And he actually uh, ends with praise. So the redemption is in verse 53. Solomon is asking God that he knows and I don't know how he knew this, but he, he knew that there will be times when they may be defeated. They may be taken into captivity, but that God would redeem them back from those uh, uh, failures, from those times when they were captive or taken as prisoners or other nations defeated them, that he would redeem them back, that he would bring them out of, out of uh, um, captivity and make them a nation unto him again. So um, he concludes with the praise and worship of God. And um, I wanted to talk about that just ever so briefly because um, he is praising God in advance. None of these things have happened before. He is praising God. And we should, uh, you know, think about the future. Think about the things that we need uh, because we know that we're not perfect that we're going to need God to do and pray those things in advance. Praise God in advance because we know that he is faithful and just to forgive us and to cleanse us from all, from all righteousness, but that he will redeem us. He will redeem the time. He will, he will redeem our name. He will redeem the circumstances um, that got us um, away from him, that, that took us off track. So that God is a redeeming God. So we can pray that. Um, as well. As a bonus, I just wanted to add that Second Chronicles seven is actually the uh, the scripture that shows how God answered Solomon's prayer. It shows that God accepted his prayer. He was approval. He approved of the prayer, and that he answered the prayer. It's of uh, Second Chronicles chapter seven shows that uh, God answered by fire and he showed his glory to the people. So I just hope that that really helped you. I hope that that's a better, uh, uh, more in-depth 
discussion of the prayers and how we can apply them to our lives. And I thank you for watching. I actually do a read and pray and seek God on these scriptures and um, start applying them to your life as God gives you understanding and as you read his word. Bye. Thank you.